Thank you. Um, Can I? Thank you. So, um, thank you, um, Keir Lock. So, the current definition uh, of recording devices is very broad in this particular bill. So, any types of recording uh, devices or systems used by Angarda Siakana should, at the very least, be specified in a re relevant code of practice. Ideally, there should be a list of all the approved devices, but in the absence of that, we should have a proper code of practice in relation to, to the use of such uh, devices. So, that applies for both Amendment 3 and, and 4. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else wish to speak? Minister, can I call on you? Thank you. Um, thank you, Senator. So, Section 47 of the Bill already relates to what can be included in a Code of Practice. Section 47.2 already, already provides for Angarda Siakonis to set out different provisions in relation to different types of recording devices when drafting up the codes, and then the intention of the subsequent amendments 3 and 4 is already provided for in the Bill. So, what you're trying to set out is actually provided for in the Bill. Um, the Codes of Practice won't be put in the bill directly, but they will be um, set out by Angarda Siakana, uh, and there will be a process that's been clearly outlined in this bill as well, which the Commissioner and his team must follow when setting out the codes of practice. Thank you. Senator, do you wish to come back in? Uh, no, I'm fine with that. Okay. So it's further down. That's fine. Stand, Thank you. How stand your amendment now? Are you pressing? Um, no, I won't press. Not pressing. Thank you. You're withdrawing? I withdraw. Oh, okay. All right. Is that agreed? Thank agreed. you. Move to uh, Amendment 4, rising out of committee proceedings. Already discussed with three. Senator, how does this amendment stand now? Not pressing. You're not pressing? Is that agreed? Agreed. Not moved. Okay. Not moving. Not moving. Uh, amendment 5, in the names of Rowan and Flynn, is out of order. Uh, previously rejected in committee of the whole Shannon. Uh, amendment 6, in the names of Keoghan and Mullen, out of order, potential charge on the revenue. Um, amendments... I, it's out of order. I don't think you can deal with it. I know, I know it's been out of order, but to have your cameras calibrated is really important. I know it's a, a cost in the exchequer, but at the end of the day, if these cameras are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, and they're not functioning properly, and they're not checked by PSA-approved... Uh, suppliers, then this, this legislation is not worth salt if, you're not, if you don't have calibration of your, of, your C, of your device, the CCTV within that device. Okay. I allowed you a little bit of liberty there. It's, it's, it is out of order, and as I said, I did allow you a little bit of liberty there, but look, um, you've made your point. We move to uh, Amendment 7 in the name of Keoghan and Mullen. Arises out of committee proceedings, 7 to 9 inclusive, 11 and 12 are related, and may be discussed together by agreement. Can you propose, please? Yeah, I'm proposing it. Seconder? Second. Agreed? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Senator Kiel. So, retained AMPO data is not defined in this bill. It's unclear if it refers to a retained pool of AMPO data pertaining to all vehicles or a retained pool of AMPO data strictly pertaining to vehicles of interest uh, on a watch list. Uh, maybe the Minister could specify which one it is. Um, this amendment um, would allow searches of retained AMPR data to be carried without the requirement of reasonable grounds to believe there is a significant threat to public safety or order. This could have a chilling effect on the, the right uh, to protest and must be safeguarded uh, against. Thank you. And I will allow you back in. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I will Thank respond you. to all of them. Um, so firstly, and I'll, I'll take them in order if that's okay, Amendment 7, which Senator Kilgan has spoken to, um, and I did, and I know you weren't available, but at committee stage, um, what I said I clearly is that I think this is an operational matter for the Garda Commissioner, and again, a lot of what we're discussing in these groupings are matters that will be set out in the codes of practice rather than in the bill. Um, as part of the drafting of a code of practice, there'll be a consultation that will be with stakeholders, as has been outlined uh, by Senator Ward, but there will also be input from the general public as well, so members here and others will have an opportunity to input into the development of these codes of practice. The guards themselves, I think, must be allowed to decide what the level of threat is, and I don't think we should be putting in legislation uh, how we would evaluate a threat level 
not knowing the scenario, not knowing the uh, evidence, not knowing the situation um, on the ground. So it's up to the Gardaí themselves to evaluate the threat level posed to public security, to public safety, uh, which may evolve over a short or a longer time frame. The Gardaí decision-making model is deployed by the Gardaí, and this is to ensure that there's consistency in decision-making, even in the most dynamic situations where they have to apply that immediately. And we've seen that with recent protests where Gardaí have to respond immediately, uh, but also they do take that graduated response. Um, I want to stress it can't and should not be the case that, that a Garda member is the only person that does not have the ability to record an incident. And I think at the moment it is very one-sided. The Garda are the only individuals in the most part on the ground who do not record incidents. We know that it can be amended, changed, uh, perceived in certain ways then when others record those. So I think it's important that Garda have the tools uh, and the ability to record incidents as they happen. Uh, in relation to the deletion of both the ex execution uh, of criminal penalties and the prosecution of the security of the state as proposed uh, in respect of the former. There's a clear and transparent use case in section 9.3 which would fall under this purpose. That's when they're executing a court order uh, or a warrant in respect of the latter. It's not clear as to why maybe uh, the censor is proposing to delete the protection of the security of the state uh, as a purpose. Um, this is the one in uh, line 17 on page 10. The purpose currently outlined in section 9.2 as the bill stands are consistent with the grounds in which restrictions on privacy rights may be allowed under Article 8 of the ECHR, and that is the right to respect for private and family life, home and correspondence. So it's on those grounds that I cannot accept this amendment. In relation to Amendment Number 8, Senator Rowan, again, I want to stress that this is really for the codes of conduct. Um, I think it's appropriate that it would be in the codes of conduct. Um, while I appreciate um, the intention behind this, I mean, there are absolutely circumstances where a member might not turn on um, their camera and it might be that they have suddenly been attacked. They don't have the time to. We've seen only yesterday recent reports attacks on members of Angarda Shia Khan have increased. So it's very possible that a member may not have the time. But I, I want to be very clear, and this will be said out very clearly in the codes of conduct, or it will have to be, that where a member does not turn on their camera or where they turn it off for any reason, they will have to explain why. They will have to go through a particular process. And if they have done so incorrectly, if they have not turned it on or turned it off where they shouldn't have or should have, uh, then there can be disciplinary proceedings within Angarda Shia Khan, but separate to that GSOC is there and available, obviously, for members to go to to make complaints. And a separate piece of legislation, which we're obviously bringing through the House at the moment, uh, will amend, will empower GSOC further to be able to respond to these types of complaints in a quicker, more efficient and a more effective way. So there are a number of different changes that are taking place. Uh, the code governing this part will contain further details on the operation of it. Uh, and as I said, this is subject to consultation with various different bodies, including the ECHR and many others, who will have a say to make sure that there is there is fairness and that there is balance here in how these cameras uh, are being used. In relation to Amendment 9, uh, Senator Keoghan, training of Garda personnel, it is very much an operational matter for the Commissioner, irrespective of whether it's this, whether it's training on hate crime, whether it's around domestic or sexual violence. Uh, there is, however, a provision in this bill, uh, Section 47.8, to ensure that the Garda Commissioner takes all reasonable steps to ensure that any codes of practice are brought to the attention of personnel, so that would be in the form of training. On the pilot scheme, a pilot scheme in respect of body-worn cameras uh, will be carried out. I expect that will be in the middle of next year. Already the Garda are looking at the various different types of cameras that have been and are being used in different jurisdictions, the different types of technologies, how they're used, where they're used on their person, and I've had uh, demonstrations of these only recently while down at the ploughing, so work is already underway, but they will officially be piloted once this legislation is enacted and once they are procured. Uh, so for that reason, I can't support it, but to reassure you that training is part of this, but also there will be pilots to make sure that whatever we do procure is the best. Um, I think we have... One benefit in that we are late to the party here, but we do and can see where ha there have been challenges or difficulties in the past, and I think we can learn from other jurisdictions in that regard. In respect of Amendment 11, as I said, a committee stage, the location uh, and the manner in which it's worn, again, this will be informed by international best practice, and, and this is being looked at, uh, as I mentioned just a second ago already. The type of camera that they use is yet to be decided, um, but as you'll be aware, um, an RFI, a request for information, was released by the Gardaí on the 12th of September, so that process is underway. It will ultimately depend on the type of camera available, but again, technology is improving all the time. So it's important that we have the best technology available to us. Amendment 12 would not be a practical solution to what the Senator is trying to achieve. Aerial vehicles 
might be up too high to be able to put something on it for people to be able to see perhaps um, that there is a camera attached regardless of the, the nature or type of the identifier placed on the camera. The bill does already state very clearly whether it's this or whether it's the body worn cameras that recording devices and this is section 95A insofar as practicable have to be overt uh, and that obviously applies to drones where they're being uh, used. The process of drafting a code does include consultation as I've said and this includes this particular piece with the Data Protection Commission. Um, so obviously our obligations around data protection, people's privacy rights when using a device of this kind has to be taken into account. So the fact that the codes of conduct can only be agreed with the engagement and the agreement of the Data Protection Commission, I think is saying very clearly that we respect and will respect and the Gardaí must respect people's privacy rights, whether it's a body-worn camera, whether it's a drone, whether it's a camera on a canine unit, whatever type of equipment it is, it must be in line with the data protection legislation. And we've seen in other legislation where it's not, it has to be changed. And as you'll know, parts of this bill are amending um, issues that arose around CCTV directly because the Data Protection Commission raised concerns uh, around how they were being used and people's privacy rights. So just, I suppose, a very clear example of where the Data Protection Commission has highlighted concerns. We've responded, we've made changes. The fact that they will be included at the very outset of setting out these codes of conduct, I think, is very welcome. Thank you. No, Senator Kilgan, I'll allow you back in. Thank you. Just on uh, Section 9 there, um, Although you've committed there to rolling out a pilot scheme, you know, the training of Gardaí on these devices is really, really important. Um, I cannot specify that enough because I know with some of the current CCTV that they have at this moment, a lot of the Gardaí actually don't even know how to access that data. So having training for the, the data controllers or whoever's going to be in control of that data is really, really important. Um, you know, you do run the risk of having uh, problems then arising. So I think the amendment was very, uh, very uh, reasonable amendment asking for the pilot schemes uh, before deployment. Um, the, the schemes should test the effect and effectiveness for a specified purpose and to facilitate a human rights impact assessment, a privacy impact assessment and a data protection impact assessment where necessary. And that should be done after your pilot scheme, just to make sure that everything is uh, protected and that privacy uh, uh, rights are being protected. So I'm uh, disappointed that you know you haven't. You said you're committing. Are you committing to doing a pilot scheme? I want you to specify. Are you going to there do will a, pi be a pilot? Absolutely. 100%. You will be doing a pilot scheme, and that's mid next year. That's mid next year. So are you accepting um, my amendment then? Uh, no, your amendment is not being accepted because it asks around training, which is not a competency of this legislation. It is for but the can commissioner you not, to as a minister, out. Can you not, as a minister, instruct on Garda Shikana, the commissioner, to facilitate the training of personnel that will be in charge of uh, their data? I can come back, but training is an operational matter for the commissioner, so it's not within our remit here. What I can say is that the Garda commissioner... Um, has very clearly shown whether it's the rollout of specialist units in any area that training is absolutely paramount. So if you have people using specialist equipment, whether it's CCTV or others, or the fact that Gardaí, frontline Gardaí will now be using this, it will be part of the overall training. But it is not for me to specify in legislation what training the Commissioner should or should not roll out. It is an operational matter for the Garda Commissioner uh, and it's not for this legislation. It's not so appropriate who, in this so legislation. So, Minister, who will be carrying out the, 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 the privacy impact assessment or the data protection impact assessment as, after this? Okay. Just who, who, whose role is that? Is that your role or is that the Commissioner's role? Okay, we have to move on. Okay. We have to move on.